Hi, I'm Pavel Spechalski and one of the things that we cannot grizzle about in the year 2020 are the new FPV cameras, because we have quite a lot of them on the market, good cameras and even better cameras. Today, today, let's take a look at the two new propositions from the company called the Cadix that I think in 2019 released a very much like Rattle camera and now they are coming back with the second generation of the Rattle. Today, today we will take a look at the Rattle 2 and the baby Rattle 2. Uh, we will see how they behave in the air, are they worth the money and uh, is there any practical difference besides the size between the Rattle and the baby Rattle. So uh, let's go. First of all, I will skip the part when I show you how the Rattle 2 looks like and what are the technical parameters of the camera because no, you can just see at the description of the camera if you want to and see this by yourself. I will only tell you that, yeah, the baby Rattle is a pretty small camera, much smaller than the micro sizes. I think they call it a nano size. Um, on the other hand, uh, this is definitely bigger than the Pico camera I, I saw. So, okay, let's call it a nano size camera and will definitely fit uh, basically all the small builds uh, on the whoops, toothpicks and so on and so on. This thing also has uh, 1200 TV lines, but be very careful about deciding if the camera is good or bad only based on the number of the TV lines because this is this is irrelevant and only for the internal processing oh only for the internal processing of the image sensor however the thing that is basically i think the most important in case of the fpv cameras is how does the image on the uh, defaults during flight uh, is it sharp crisp enough how does it handle the transition from dark to light and from light to dark so when for example you are doing a power loop or flying below the tree can you see still see where you are going because the camera adjusts immediately to the new lighting conditions and also how's the brightness and the saturation and in general what are the feelings from the flight with the camera and I do like it I do like it with the one small exception and this is the exception I have to say between before we will go into the details of uh, of the rattle 2 in the air for my personal preference the default saturation was too high and the default brightness was too low this is why i had to lower the saturation by two steps from the default value on the on the settings of the camera and i had to slightly increase the brightness when i did that ready very nice picture super nice transition from dark to light and from light to dark uh, also very little basically no noticeable delay but in 2020 finding a camera analog camera that still has a delay is like in, in, impossible interesting that nobody measures the camera delay anymore right right <clears throat> Excuse me, but the thing that got me the most was probably the feeling of the smoothness during the fast flips on the roll. On some cameras, you start maneuver, there's something is happening on the screen and you end maneuver almost blindly. With Rattle, I don't know, was it my perception of the, of the whole thing or they did really did something pretty interesting with the image processing and the sensor, was that the fall... Full, full speed maneuver was smooth and fast and I was able really to always observe the horizon where it is. In the beginning I was slightly like, whoa, whoa, what's happening? I'm doing the flip so slow, but no, it was supposed to be like that and this is really a nice feature. So, the bottom line, is the Rattle 2 a good camera? Yes, I think it's a very good camera, especially when we take into the consideration the price of it. Because the price is something like 31 bucks when got from China. This is, this is really a good price. Uh, is it the best camera on the market? I would have to say no, because for example, for my personal preference, the Foxy T-Rex offers much better uh, image quality. However, Foxy T-Rex is half that 
much more expensive because the T-Rex is closer to 50 bucks, not 30 bucks. This is why, yes, if you do not want to spend around 50 for only an analog FPV camera, then yeah, think about getting yourself a rattle too, because it's cheap, it's a good quality, nice transition from dark to light and light uh, to dark, no noticeable delay, but like I said, this is not really that relevant in the 2020. And in general, the picture is just good in the goggles. Of course, what you were seeing uh, over there on the screen was only from the DVR, and the DVR always looks like <coughs> nevertheless. In the goggles, it looked much better and... Um, Good product for the end of the 2020 and the beginning of the 2021 for all of us who are still using the analog FPV. Thank you very much, Cadix. Um, I think you did a good job on that. Now, if you are watching, send me something digital now. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Until the next one. Bye-bye.